So today we're going to make our 2012 Mac Mini way faster by booting off an external SSD drive. I'm going to show you how from A to Z. Let's get into it. All right, welcome back to my video. If you're not new to the channel, you've seen my videos before, you notice I'm in a different spot. I'm not at my iMac over there. I have an old iMac over there. But I'm, I basically have my Mac 2012 Mac Mini running here with the, my widescreen. You can see it back here. I set this up. I have a video on this if you want to check that out before. Long story short, though, is I want to show people today. This is a 2012 Mac Mini i5. It, this one does have an SSD in it, but it's a really bad one. But a lot of people have these with the 5400 spinning drives, or they have like a 7200 spinning drive. And the drives on these Mac Minis, if they don't have an SSD in them, are super slow. Your boot times are slow, you know, a minute and all that stuff. Your computer is slow. So by installing an SSD in here, you can make it super fast, 2012s. Mac minis, but the problem is a lot of people don't want to take it apart. They don't, they just don't want to do it. So I'm going to show people today just taking an external SSD drive, an external enclosure. I'm going to show you how to just really quickly create it and make a bootable, make this bootable so the OS is on this disc and then your Mac mini boots from this external drive. It's going to make it way faster. I'm going to show you. Um, again, I'm not, I can't be tech support for everyone, so this is just going to be how you can do it. Um, you know, the parts that I recommend and stuff, I mean, I don't recommend these. I bought this because these are cheaper. It's an inland drive and a Wavelink enclosure. But I'll show you if I was doing it myself for real, I'd probably get like a Samsung Evo drive. I'd probably get a, a higher quality enclosure because you really want something that's going to be quality because your whole OS is running off of that. Always also back up your data and stuff. You have to back up everything when you do this because if this thing fails, you know, you lose the computer. Just same thing though, basically, when you lose your drive on your computer, the same thing. But, but this is more parts, obviously, external drives. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to show you a couple things about the setup and what I want to do, show you how to actually download the software and then just do it really quickly. Again, I'm not going to touch on every single point. There's a lot of videos. I've made tons of them on this. Go back and check out my almost my first thing. I think my first video has a huge tutorial on this. It'll work the same with the Mac Mini as it will with uh, the older, any older Mac, like iMac, older iMac, um, anything like that, older Mac Minis. You just can't do it on the new M1s the same way, so just keep that in mind. But the older ones, you can still do this. This, this process is basically the same for all of them. Um, but I'm going to do it on the 2012 Mac Mini today, so get ready for a little bit longer video. And let's get into it. Without further ado, I'll show you how to do it. All right, and here's the SSD enclosure and the SSD drive that I actually picked up. Again, I'm not recommending these. These are just something I picked up cheap. I think the drive was like $20 for 120 gigs. I totally recommend going with a larger drive. Just showing you for the example here. The Wavelink actually was, I think, $10. So I'm, I mean, I'm in like, you know, 30 bucks here. So long story short, go with better equipment here, but the process will be exactly the same. So I just wanted to show you what I bought. Now there's the 2012 Mac Mini that I'm going to be using. You can see it here. And I have it hooked up to, again to a widescreen, but that doesn't really matter. What I'm gonna do is just show you how to, you know, let's go ahead and we're gonna get a, a bootable external SSD off of this one and uh, the whole process behind it. So let's get moving forward so we can get through the video. All right, and when I take everything out of the box, this video is not about putting the external SSD drive together. You can see it here, um, you know, long story short is you don't want a USB-C, it needs to be a USB-A type connection to the external drive. And that is gonna be because you don't have USB-C on the 2012 uh, Mac Mini. So long story short, this is not so much about this. You have to create your own external drive or you can buy one of the pre-built ones by Samsung. That should work also. Um, but I'm not gonna show you how to build the drive really. I'm just gonna show you how to use it once it's built. So just wanted to show you the parts I'm using and uh, we can go from there. I'll have all this in the description uh, also. But I mean, like I said, I recommend using a bigger drive more than 120 gigs and a better external drive for this if you're gonna use this long term. All right, so I actually hooked up, I put the SSD drive in the enclosure and that's all ready. I plugged it into the USB-A port there in the back of the Mac Mini. And usually you're gonna get a message like this and hopefully you can see it. I'm not doing this, I'm trying to do this a little quicker, but it basically says that the disk is unreadable. All right, so if you get the window where it says initialize it or whatever, and it, or if it says it can't read the disk that you just plugged in, just cancel out of that, click the cancel button. You wanna be back to a blank desktop like this. First thing I want to do though is I want to go ahead and make sure I know how fast that drive is so we know what to expect when we boot off of it. So I'm going to go down here to Launchpad, see it there? And uh, inside a Launchpad, you want to click on, there's going to be an other box here. Click on other and then go to disk utility there. Now this is where you have to be absolutely careful. 
you can always boot back into your internal drive on your Mac Mini. So you, you're not, we're not deleting that, but you can accidentally delete it. So I'm not responsible. This is a disclaimer. Back up all your data before you go anywhere past this step. Back up everything, just in case. But these are your these are your internal drives over here. This is the new one I just plugged in. It's under external. So I'm going to click on the one I just plugged in, um, making sure it's the external, verifying the space, making sure it's not my main drive because you'll remove everything off of that. So here's the external drive I just plugged in. I'm going to go up to erase up here, and then I'm going to call it, you know, just for this boot off drive. And uh, what you can do is under here, format. You can format it a couple different ways. I like to do it... Um, APFS and, and basically, you know, there's case sensitive, case sensitive encrypted. I just do AP, uh, APFS. That's usually what I do. So I'm going to select that right there and then leave it at GUID part partition map right there. So we're going to go ahead and then once this is all done, verify that's not your main drive again. Go ahead and click erase. What it's going to do is it's going to basically make it so that it's readable. You'll see it go through some process here doing a bunch of stuff. And uh, it'll be done here in just a couple seconds. It says erase process is complete. Click done. Now we're going to go back down to the boot drive and see how it went back up here. You want to make sure you're not up there again. I'm going to go back down to the boot drive, click on it, and you'll see that it reformatted it as APFS here. It's called boot off drive now. And uh, if I look over here now, I created a little drive on my, see over here on my desktop. So there is the drive right there. So let's start here. Let's see how fast this is. So now I'm going to go ahead and just shut this down like that. And let's go ahead and see how fast this is. This is just to test it. So what we're going to do really quickly is I'm going to go into Black Magic. You can download this for free from the App Store if you don't have it because it's not standard. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little icon there. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to go ahead and say Select Target Drive. It's going to open up a bunch of stuff here, but what I want to do is go down to this boot drive. See it there? That's the drive right there uh, that I actually named it. It's the same one that's over here. Click open, and then we're going to go ahead and click start, and we're going to get a speed test just to see where we where we think we're going to be once we're all done. So let's go ahead, and we're clicking on it. So we can see it's about 384, 385, 386 on the right, and then it's going to do the reads is about 381 point something, you know, somewhere in there. So you can see the speed of that. I'm going to stop it. Now, this is not the fastest result um, because of the fact that this is not the best enclosure and not the best drive, maybe. But it's a lot faster, way faster than the spinning drives that you have. So if you use any drive, if you can get 400 or 500, somewhere in that range, usually in the 400s is about as much as I can get on these. That's good enough. Um, so anyways, long story short, I just want to show people, we know that it's working at least now, so let's go ahead with the process of booting off of it and show you how to do all that. So what we want to do now is install the OS, so we need to download it first. So if you go, there's a link up here, I'll, sh I'll put it up, you know, I'll put the link up here so you can see it, but it's basically on Apple's website. And uh, if you go in here, you can check compatibility to show you what versions of the OS are compatible. I'm going to look at Mac OS Catalina here. If you click on this, you know, we scroll down, we'll see that the Mac Mini is a 2012, is, is definitely uh, Catalina compatible. So we're going to download Catalina. So on this web page that I just showed you, if you keep scrolling down, it says, you know, OS, Mac OS Catalina 10.15 here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and uh, you'll see it here. So I'm going to click on OS Catalina. And it's going to bring me to the App Store, you can see here. And uh, and then what I want to do is once I'm in here, I'm going to click Get on this. And we got to go ahead and grab it. So go ahead and download this, uh, depending on what version of the OS you want to install. And uh, I'll meet you on the other side. All right. After it's downloaded, you're going to get this screen. You're going to see it down here as well, like this little Mac OS installer. Also, if you go to Launchpad really quickly, you're going to see that it was probably added in Launchpad over here. So you can always click on this as well. The reason I'm filming this crazy way right now is because when I do all this, it's going to actually not let me capture my screen because I'm going to be kind of going outside of Mac OS. So I know this is not the best way to look at this because of the filming, but I'm doing it for a reason. So anyways, once this comes up, or you know, if you close this for some reason, you can just double click this down here, the Catalina installer. You want to click continue right there, and you'll see here it says, you know, agree with the license, just like you're installing a new OS. So what you want to do next is you want to click agree right there. And, uh, and then agree again. And what it's going to do now, this is the most important part. This is, your, this is your current drive. Do not delete this. Do not delete this. Do not install over it unless you want to get rid of it completely. What you want to do is you want to click on show all disks right there. And super important disclaimer, you know, do all your research before you try this. Back up all your data. But anyways, you want to click show all disks. And you're going to notice there's the boot off drive, the one that's over here. See it? 
So we want to install the OS onto this boot, boot off drive. So do not select this one, select this one, the new 128 gig SSD external drive. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click install right here and uh, watch this. I'm going to click install. Now I'm going to cut away because it's going to make me put my password in. All right. Now, once my password's in, it's going to start the boot up process. And you can see it here. It says about three minutes because it's going fairly quickly because it is fast. A fast drive that I'm booting, you know, I'm actually installing onto an SSD drive, so it's going to be a lot faster. So at the end of this, let's just keep filming, but we're going to come back to this in a couple seconds. I don't want you to wait through all this. So this is what this is the process that should be happening. Hopefully, you're doing this. Actually, while while this is happening, let me just say a couple things. You will be able to boot back as long as you didn't erase it. Um, you will be able to boot back into your other drive, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You should be able to do that just fine. Um, you know, we're creating a different bootable drive, so this is only something new. It's not, we're not removing the old one. So anyways, I just want to tell you, I'll show you that at the end of the video, how to boot back into your, your existing, you know, current internal drive, if you want to ever do that. So you have kind of two Macs. So let's go ahead and just watch this and then I'll come back in a second. All right, so now that this is done, it says your computer will restart automatically in 11 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead and restart it here. So it's going to restart and you're going to get a little nervous here. So let's let it let, let's let it do its thing here. It's going to take a couple seconds closing applications. Now what's going to happen is it's going to boot into that bootable drive because that's what we told it to do. Um, so hold on one second here and we'll see what happens. The first time it actually boots up too, it's going to take a little bit longer. So don't just let it go. It's going to take some time. We're going to have to go through the whole installation process as well to get the new OS installed. This is not the initial boot. What it's doing now is it's kind of installing actually the, the program. So this is not how long it's going to take to boot up your Mac. It's going to be way quicker with the external SSD. What it's doing now is it's getting ready. It's kind of, you know, getting ready the Mac OS and everything. So it's going to take a long time. Don't be afraid here. Let it go. Do not restart your computer. Do not do anything. Just let this go until the next time. It, you know, I'll show you in a couple seconds what happens, but this is going to take a long time time here because it's doing its thing. It's been about 10 minutes and it's still at 13 minutes remaining. So again, don't be afraid. I'm just keep saying it because people freak out here. Let it go. All right. After it looks like it finishes, it's going to seem like the computer's rebooting or something. And then it's going to go back to this again. But the second time, it's going to be a lot faster. You can see it moving a lot faster. So let it complete this one as well. All right. Finally, after everything is done, you'll see here it comes to this welcome screen. And this is how you set up a new Mac. So I'm not going to go through this with you. There's tons of videos on how to set up a new Mac. This thinks it's a new Mac. So all the new programs and everything. So I'll just click the first button here, continue. You know, it says preferred languages, English, all this stuff, continue. So, and then you set up your, your basically, you know, you have to go through and set up your Wi-Fi and everything else. So just keep in mind that this is what you have to do and set up your Mac as if it's a brand new Mac. Um, again, go out, there's videos on this. I'm not going to show you how to go through all this, but I'll catch you on the other side again. But go ahead and set this up now, just like you were a brand new Mac. All right, so once you get through all the settings, just like you are a new Mac, you know, it's going to say setting up your Mac now. So this is going to take a few seconds and eventually it's going to boot back in. We'll see it here in a second. All right, so now you're actually on the brand new Mac right off of the external SSD drive. Uh, so just keep that in mind that you're now on the brand new Mac. All your applications down here, they're going, to be, they're going to be gone because you're starting from scratch. Now, granted, you can boot back into your old internal hard drive in a second. I'm going to show you that. But we're on a brand new system. You can see it here. And uh, so long story short, let's go ahead and, you know, even if I, let's say we're going to go ahead and restart this just like this. It's going to know enough now because it's programmed to actually boot right back into that external SSD drive. So you have to make sure that's always plugged into your, your Mac Mini. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we're just going to reboot it here. Now, if you had a spinning drive and it probably took a couple minutes to boot up Catalina, probably um, on this SSD. Now, this is not the fastest. You're going to be able to get a faster one, but already the Apple icons come up. Let's just see how fast this takes. This should be a lot quicker. Maybe, you know, this is going to maybe be 30 seconds versus a number of minutes. So you can see right away and when we're doing this in real time, how fast is this going to be for your new external SSD to boot off of? Should be really fast. Um, you know, we're probably about 20 seconds now. It's thinking about it, and here goes the rest of it. There it goes. So there we go. There we go. It takes about 20 or 30 seconds, and, and then every, everything's back up. And now we're let's go ahead and put our password in, and I'll show you the next step. All right. Now the beauty of doing this is, so this is a brand new computer. You got to reinstall. You know, you, you have to have licenses for this stuff because it thinks Apple thinks it's a new computer. So, but the, the problem is, people are like, "Oh my God, can I get back to my old computer?" Yeah, if you test this out and you did it right, you, you backed everything up, but you still should have your other drive internally just fine. So you go up to Apple, 
Apple system preferences there. And now what you want to do is there's going to be a place in here and you're going to see it if I can actually, you know, find it. It's startup disk. See it right there? So you click on startup disk and it's going to show now your the bootable drive that we're on now and it's going to show the old Macintosh internal drive right there. See it? So to make changes, what you want to do is you want to just click on this little lock icon and then go ahead and type in your password. I'm going to cut away here. All right, once that's basically, once you punch in everything there, you're going to see that these are now lit up. So all you have to do is you have to select your old drive there. See it? I selected not, not the boot drive, but the, the one that's our old drive internally, and just click Restart. And uh, if you watch this, I'm going to go ahead and click Start right there. Restart, I'm sorry. Now, if you watch this, this is actually going to go ahead and reboot now back into your old system. So if you want to then get back into your old system, I happen to have a, a, you know, an SSD in that system as well. Um, let me go ahead and just close out of this. But it's going to boot back into your old system just fine. So there it is. Now it's booting back into the secondary or internal SSD drive, the one that was our original one. All right, so now we're booted back into our old computer. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to cut away. All right, now I've loaded it back up. So again, now I'm on the old computer, which is the original one. You can see it looks different. I have more programs down here. All my original programs came back. I have some files over here. So it's different. So again, to get to boot back into the external SSD drive, you go up to here, System Preferences, and uh, you go back basically Startup Disk, like I had mentioned before. Oops, it says my updates are available. Startup Disk right there and uh, you click on this little lock icon and then you boot off this drive here like we said and then you restart it and it'll boot off the other drive and there you go you can boot back and forth as much as you want to i got all this new stuff coming up now but you can boot off that drive as much as you want to switch back and forth do whatever you want it's a great way to speed up your mac your, your mac mini so give it a try and let us know what you think in the comments again this is not a full tutorial do your research back everything up try it out have fun and i just wanted to show people what's available so what do you think? Not too shabby, huh? It actually works pretty good. Uh, again, this video is not so much about it, it, the parts and all that stuff. It's just the process of doing it. Do your own research, get a good SSD drive, get a good enclosure that actually fits into a 2012. They only have the USB-A ports, don't get a USB-C port, remember that. Um, and make sure that it's a fast drive and a quality drive. And then you can follow these steps that I showed you today. Always back up your data, um, disclaimer, because I don't want people losing their data. This is a process that can happen. Um, make sure you know what you're doing before you do it and all that kind of stuff. So just want to show people what's available out there, what's possible with these older systems. And uh, if you want to take it on, though, definitely, you know, do your research. Watch a couple of videos. I have a bunch of old videos on this. Check out my channel. I did, I think my first video was something about this. And then the process is all the same, basically. So you can watch multiple videos. Make, make a plan down and then go ahead and implement it. So I hope this helps people at the end of the day. I hope people watch the channel because of these kind of weird videos. Anyways, love making videos. So if you can support the channel and click the like button, it's going to really help me out. I will talk to everyone soon. Peace.